Welcome back everyone. Before we get into it, I want to let you know that tickets for our tour with Professor Brian Gringo on sale today. You can grab yourself a ticket in the link in our bio and while you're there you might want to get yourself or someone you love a spot in our Thinking Academy Cosmology course with Professor Alan Duffy. It's going to be a really good one. Now stay tuned for news about Catherine Page Harden's latest seminar at Princeton and Aussie evolutionary biologist talks about sex, dating and AI. Jonathan Haidt gives us his book recommendations and a chat simulator helps us prepare for difficult conversations. First up, Princeton recently held a very interesting seminar chaired by the decant professor of bioethics, Peter Singer. Peter chaired a talk by Catherine Page Harden, a psychology professor and geneticist who has been causing waves this year after publishing her revolutionary book, The Genetic Lottery, Why DNA Matters for Social Equality. Page has dedicated her life to studying behavioral genetics and doing studies on twins to find how our genes affect our success in life, whether it be how far we go at school, how much money we make, or what types of relationships we have. Many of us support a meritocracy. I work hard for this. We think that people should be rewarded for how hard they work or how talented they are. But as Paige's work shows, we definitely don't all start off on equal footing. It's not fair. If we want a smaller gap between the haves and the have nots, we've got to acknowledge that genetics plays a considerable role and that it's so much more than just hard work or a good upbringing. And tell us, have you read The Genetic Lottery? If so, what did you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Now, on to some more biology, but this time of the evolutionary kind. Rob Brooks is Professor of Evolution at the University of New South Wales, where he spends his time researching and writing about some very spicy topics, mostly sex, dating, and AI. He's gone on Aereo Magazine podcast with Iona Italia to chat about his latest article in Aereo Magazine, in which he predicts that in the future, AI will have learned so much about human interaction that we might like AI systems or even love them more than we love other people. All right, that's straight out of Ex Machina. Rob has written two fascinating books. The first was Sex, Genes and Rock and Roll, How Evolution Has Shaped the Modern World, in which he argues that evolutionary biology can explain a lot about why people are getting fatter, why so many rock stars end up dead at 27, and why humans are so consumeristic. His second book is Artificial Intimacy, Virtual Friends, Digital Lovers and Algorithmic Matchmakers, which he talks about how human capacity for friendship, love and intimacy play out in the modern world. When we encounter new technologies, like social media, online dating, and virtual reality sex. If you're interested in these topics, and let's be real, who isn't, check out the podcast and read his latest article in Area Magazine. All right, next up, our mate Jonathan Haidt has been very busy providing us with the goods this week. He's given us a list of his five favorite books on happiness. He's very humble and doesn't list his own best-selling book, The Happiness Hypothesis, which is definitely our favorite book on happiness. John also has written a piece for The Atlantic in which he continues his important work in educating the world about the detrimental effects that social media is having on adolescents. But possibly the best thing that John has given the world this week is a free seminar on how to change people's minds when data alone is not enough. This was a talk given at the Modern Data Stat Conference 2021, and he gives expert psychological tips on how to persuade people using emotion, intuition, and storytelling. On the topic of changing minds, John has given us great recommendations to help us get through any difficult conversations we might have with loved ones over the holiday season. It's a conversation simulator on the Open Minds website. When we hear something we disagree with, a common impulse is to say, you're wrong and here's why. We think that if we lay out the facts, the other person will realize their error and change their mind. If only us humans were that simple. Psychologists have found that when we hit someone over the head with data, they rarely change their mind. This is because when someone disagrees with us, our brain can interpret this as a threat. When we feel threatened, we respond by getting defensive. When we're defensive, we'll do everything in our power to reject the facts that have been presented to us. So, Open Mind teaches us three steps to avoid activating someone's defensive mode. Step one is establishing a collaborative goal. This is the positive goal, which isn't just this person is my opponent and I must beat them. <gasps> Step two is to get curious. Ask them a non-judgmental question about why they believe what they do. Step three is to tell a personal story which can trigger empathy in the other person and make them more open to listening to your point of view. Lastly, look at these incredible new snaps taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Every year, the Hubble does a grand tour of the outer solar system planets, checking out their atmospheres for changes. This year's shots are now in, and there are a few surprises. For example, astronomers notice a deep orange band around the equator of Jupiter, which is normally a white cloudy color. As for Saturn, we can see that it's coming out of a winter, as noted by the pale blue color peeking out beneath its rings. 
Uranus is sporting a bright white cap on the North Pole and a sharp ring of blue around the middle and scientists aren't really sure why. As for Neptune, we can see a huge dark storm visible in the Northern Hemisphere towards the upper left. How beautiful are these pics? Well guys, that's all I've got for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Share it with your network and let us know what you think we should cover next week. Until then, stay well.